Hey guys, how's it going? It's been about two weeks since I worked on this. Had some stuff to take care of. But in that two weeks, we got our missing link. That last panel has come in. Although, I wouldn't exactly call it the uh, best of quality. A little, a little funky looking on the bottom edge there. Well, we're gonna have to work with what we got. So. For those who don't know, this is a project I picked up about two months ago and uh, sat for a long time, got it running and ran it around, did brakes, did that kind of thing. Gas tank, got a new gas tank for it's not in. Right now we're chasing the metal work. Last video, did rockers, made the panels for below, made the inside back of it and the video before it, we made some back here, back sections for the back. We're going to continue on the panel that's in front of you right now. It's just held on with a clip. I was waiting for this one to show up so that we kind of work between the bolt at the same time and we need to get rid of that ugly. So without further ado, we'll let the games begin. Let's go eyeball this one up to it. We obviously don't need to use the whole panel. I don't know if we got any Bondo in here. We'll probably take a I grind in this, we'll kind of do a couple of zips up and down, see if there's any filler. I don't think so, but that will decide how far we want to go. We can probably, you know, maybe right in here section it. Just do wherever the repair needs to be. Again, if this panel is in better shape, it looks like they actually missed this fold or didn't fold it at all. At all. I'm not quite sure what happened there. It almost looks like they stuck it in a vise and bent it. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> so maybe we'll 86 that all together. And if we slice it, maybe right here, not even use any of that. Let's get ahead of ourselves. The other panel, this one, it's pretty punky all the way around. It will mate at that seam right there. It comes up here. And this black line. So we, as long as we stay within there, I think we're good. But I don't think uh, the wheel well looks like it's right about here on the inside. And I'm not sure what kind of quality that has left to it too. Maybe we'll just kind of pick away. We'll cut away. Take the plasma cutter. We'll we'll nip back at it and do a little exploratory. And get that tire out of our way too. Yeah, it's see better from the back side. So there's that lip right there of the quarter where it comes up, the wheel well we're talking about. And this is a boxed in section around that rear quarter too. Again, I think we're only gonna come up to maybe right here. I don't know if this is just for strength. Not for the light, the light is, oh no, what this is for? The uh, gas filler neck comes up through here. That's what this is meant for. That's why it's only on one side. Yeah, we need to make this piece while all that's out. We'll make a pattern for that. Well, we're back here. Let's go find out real quick what, what this stuff is. And what uglies it's hiding. expecting holes to be right through the center of that. I think it's Bondo. I don't know. Tell. I don't know. It'd be funny if it's just like dirt by cow shit that's been packed in there. All right, I give. I was literally expecting to see a big hole in the back side of that. Isn't that a pleasant surprise? If I drop that down later, we'll hammer on it a little bit more. I expected, if you look over right here, it's got holes right through it. There's holes right through it. I thought that whole section was gonna be that way. 
That's good. I'll tap that out of there. A little bit more to do, but had it removed about 10 pounds of. I'm guessing it's Bondo. I don't know how to tell. Bondo with impregnated rust. Not sure what the reasoning was. It, it possibly, my guess, maybe it was just an accident. It was a bed of something sitting in the bed of the truck and it spilled and it kind of filled in that area. That's the only thing I can come up with. What's your thoughts? But I expect that a whole area to be wasted and blown out. So that's nice. That, that much less work that uh, we need to do for repairs. Onward and upward. All right, let's hit that with a grinder and make sure it's all metal. Yeah, I ran into some to the left, but it's just filled probably due to a tin. I don't think it has anything to do with rust repair. So the back, I'm pretty confident this is all metal. Again, we could probably slice it right in this area. Keep much of the, as much of the original intact as possible. Here, I think we're probably best just, we just cut it right across. We'll work on this seam up. I don't know. I don't know if I want to flange it somewhere in here. We also have that, again, that, that tub that's in the back of there. And then over here we hit Bondo. Yeah. Seems like it's all metal though. That wasn't repaired or anything at one time. Then we got blowout down here too. That line is what the panel gets to make. We'll have to make a little section for here when we get to that. Let's take the plasma cutter and we'll cut inside that. Just get that out of our way and we'll get a better look at what's happening behind it. This is a support bracket right about, <laughs> we're gonna call it right there and right there it goes up to right through there so we're not gonna be able to cut that with the plasma car we're gonna want to roll that metal away when it's done but we could slice off the rest of it the wheel well feels like it's right Same with that. That's going to have a lip that's on the inside of there that we want to try to preserve. Measure once, cut twice. Bondo. I'm gonna go dig that away. Go we'll slice this piece off first though.
shield. Add my bracket. Make sure I'm just not in it. I'm not. Worst case, you can come back with a cutting wheel too, but let's go see what we got in here. Yeah, I say we can come back and we'll, for this part we can just make a nice straight line going across, recut it. Here's that bracket I was talking about. We can roll this. We gotta grind this back, see where the welds are, drill the faces of the weld off. Or you could actually just kind of grind it flat so the metal's so thin that it, it just peels off. We're gonna need to come up. Let's go whack on, on them with a hammer. We'll just go see if those are, are rot spots right through. Where's the hammer? Hold on. That's a rust hole. Just trying to figure out the best plan of attack. I'm just worried about fighting with the wheel well on the back here because Essentially, if this metal's all good, the panel that we have, I have a feeling that this reveal is going to look like shit. So I'd rather slice it right here if we can, put a step in it, and flange weld it going across. That might be what our best bet is. Let's get some more metal cut out of our way. Gotta be a double piece. not that hot you're doing you know isn't that it's not the plasma cutter cuts so fast and so quick it really it, it's warm but it's really not going to get you i'm going to keep trimming away i don't know how much you want to watch maybe i'll bring you back after i i pick away at it and we'll see what we have let's go trim that back a little bit more I'm just trying to stay below that grind mark. Give us some area to work with.
meal. That's where the wheel well goes through. Might have more bond on there. I'm gonna cut through that outer layer. I'm gonna see if we can curl some of this off of here. It might be rusty enough where there's not much left of it. I'm gonna use an air hammer. Some stuff I wear gloves, some stuff I don't. Because the dexterity gets you on certain things. And some things are just more of a risk, like slipping off, like with an air gun, you have, you, know, you slip off and into the metal where a lot of stuff if you're used to it, I'll explain it in a minute. I worked in a razor factory for 18 years. I worked around razor blades. <laughs> so, some people put their wrist factor a little different than others do. It's just what you're comfortable with working with. Now that I said that, I'll slice my hand off. the rest see him on the other side and probably down below down here I'll bring you back this one the metal is kind of flimsy behind it I don't want to beat on it with an air gun so I'm gonna just grind the center of it thin to the to the welds expose himself
So you can see what's going on back in here. It looks like it's more of that crap that they put in on the bed. Let's go see if we can knock that out of there. Oh yeah. like it's cement. I wonder if that's actually what it is. Harder than Bondo, you know. Let me see if we can get that section out of there and see what we can do about uh, freeing this lip up from this panel. Yeah, a little quiet time. Let's take it down a notch. <laughs> so that was cement that was in there. So that was probably what was in the bed too then. Hence the uh, fact that it was fairly heavy. So we still have this panel to go make, and that's gonna get made, of course, before this gets boxed in, just to give us a little bit better room. But I'm still kind of contemplating on what to do with moving forward. I kind of wanted to, hold on. I wanted to save that seam that was up top. I was hoping for that, plus the wheel well. Where this seam is is a lip that goes in, probably three quarters of an inch, but the wheel well, kind of comes right up to it also. So to try to be able to, to weld it, I guess we can put drill holes down from the top and plug weld from the top. And we have damage here to deal with. So I think we might just go slice right up to it. It's just that if you look how flat this is, the panel that I have, I'm not sure if it's gonna show up, but the radius of it kind of sucks. It's not, it's not as tight as that one is. I could possibly hit it in the brake, but uh, I'm, by doing that, I'm nervous about putting a bit of a crease somewhere else where I don't want one. So I'm not sure how it's gonna work. And if you look at the mess that's in it, so much for quiet time, right? Look at the mess that's in the corner. We could probably just cut that right out of there. We'll work that corner. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'm gonna pick away a little slice. See if I can get this away from this panel. I'm happy with this. We're gonna do what we said about this. We're just gonna work from the bottom edge. We'll re-slice that a straight line. Flange that, cap it with the probably a third of the panel that we bought. And let's go open this up. Live a little, right? Now it's gonna make a little patch for down in here. That's not a big deal. I'm gonna try using the actual body line to rest the, the nozzle against. You know what I mean? Let's see if we do that. Check, make sure I'm not cutting up the wheel well up. That's a, just a, such a thin gap that's in there. It's hard to work around. Good.
We got the side and up to the wheel well peeled away. Of course, I have to come back with a grinder and take what's left of them off. But what I'm going to do is there's a weld there and there. We'll cut them right off. See if I can get the wheel well to push down a little bit. At least the lip. We'll get the lip to come down. See if I can continue curling that all the way out of there. Be the best bet. Let's see if we can get in there. That should be connected. Uh, disconnected. Let's see if we can kind of just influence that down a little. Probably can just wedge something in there, huh? Maybe I'll get a little piece of wood. We'll wedge it over here. Roll this back. Yeah. Actually, you could probably use the wet, use this, right? We just run that the rest of the way in. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I got a block of wood. Gotta make the right tool for the right job. Should be enough room. Well, that's all cleaned up out of there. Rough. It's roughed anyway. But I want to try to fit the panel. Let's get that little bit of ugliness cut off that corner. No way that mess was gonna tuck in there, so I'm gonna tap that with a hammer a little bit, flatten them out. We'll try it on the car. So you think our chances are on the first first shot? Actually, we gotta. We're not gonna be able to get the other side in. Yeah, that's a phrase. See how like unrounded it is? How <laughs> unrounded? How much of a, a soft edge it is? I mean, I still have to roll that lip up and clean it up, but I am gonna go trim this fender back patch panel. I'm gonna knock off that edge that they got on there. I'll cut us a a clean edge will start and then we'll come back here we'll cut this edge to match and we'll flange it so this is one place to go and we'll notch it whatever that is left of that corner we'll notch it and I probably you know what you gotta speed this up a little bit I'm gonna prep all this while you're not looking we'll go over and get all the what's left of the welds off of and knock off the crap yeah so I trimmed actually the body straight up and down. It was cut on an angle. So I sliced that out of it. And I still have to go and cut this back on, on a clean line, but I don't want to come back. Like right now it goes to, actually you might be okay. It's right about there is where the sheet metal is gone. This panel's on an angle. So maybe we can slice it. We need a half inch overlap. Cut it from there. I just want to try to stay out of this wheel well as much as possible, just for later body work. The closer you get to this, the harder it um, is to uh, fine tune that, you know, the body lines that show the most. 
And the other problem with it, and the reason why I didn't want to take the lip, is if you look down the side of it, the body's got a roll to it, a curve to it, coming back. And the panel, of course, is pretty straight. And flush in the middle, and it's out about 3 8 of an inch over there. I think our best bet is going to be to, again, this roll is not that good compared to what was there. And not to say we can't go back, you know, seam sealer and kind of clean it up too, but let's go play with the metal a little bit. Let's try hitting this again in my break. See if we can get a little bit tighter radius on this. And then the next thing is the lip is too fat. It goes in too far. Got a fat lip. Right here, there's a lip that comes down over it. Well, that's up against it now, so we're gonna have to trim some of that back just so that we can do the alignment of that panel. Ooh, well, it looks like it's getting to stop pushing it on the bottom yet, but. So we'll finish fine tuning that one. We'll throw some clamps on it and then we'll, we'll jump to this corner. So we're back at the break. I did some work on it since last we used it, put a belt on it. The, the electric motor is noisy. I may change it at some point, but what's nice about this one, it's got photo and reverse switch on it. I may, may be able to do that with another one, but that's all right, as long as it works. Uh, let's go do a test bend, and then I think we're gonna hang it off the end of the die. That did for us. It's folded it further. I'm hoping that, that wasn't the line and I rolled the line. I don't think so. Let's go find out. No. I like that better. Again, it can't sit in all the way. It's a little bit better tight. Might even hit it one more time. Might just hit it a little bit harder. See if we can get just a little sharper line on that and then we'll trim that top off hey here's again came out pretty good I'm gonna leave it and I hammered the lip back to a 90 let's say we want to shave this back to we'll make a line up call it right there I'm gonna come back with a cutting wheel and make that panel that same length the whole way. And then we get the shrinker stretcher. Once we get it where we like it, we'll kick a curve in it. Yeah, let's go try it one more time. It's looking pretty good. We're rubbing in the middle a little. But we still have that. We have that to get rid of. Let's go see if we can make that a smiley face. And this is G Shrinker Stretcher. And we want smiley face. We want this panel to have a slight bow going this way. Smiley face. Yeah, we're just going to give it some 
Very like that was too much. That last one was too much. I just did because you want to do a nice even curve. I think a little bit more of it even towards the rear right here. So let's just give her a little up taps. I went a little too much right there. I'd rather have it so we can push in on the center when we weld it, you know? Let's see if that did anything for us. Alright again. I hair too much like I you know what it is? I think it's just being held up. Yeah, we're physically physically hitting in the center i think that'll be good we can give it a light push i re again i'd rather have it preloaded this way a little bit than the other just make the excuses for overdoing it <laughs> all right we got i wish i can do that lip the same as you did the top but i'm gonna try hammering that a little bit more at least flat so that how did that look, by the way? Yeah, I want to be able to close that gap up. I need to be able to go that way. So let me try rolling that lip down a little bit, see how far we can tuck up into this corner. And again. better that's pretty good a little bit of hammering on on this piece I think I'm gonna I'm gonna tap that tip down a little too I do a little while there Again, I wish I was just able to fold this lip a little tighter. It just has so much of a roll to it, just what it is. The metal on the metal on the inside is touching. I think we're starting to split hairs. Let's move this part, let's move this party on along a little. I have one clamp right about here, just holding it together. It was actually the, the wheel well had to get popped up over the the outside welds that was holding the center up so there's nothing holding it right now yeah and i think we'll be able to, we'll be able to draw that in with my hands and time is ready i think we should probably mark all right so now that's the end we want to be roughly a half inch into it. Ugh. I am going to mark it on the back side. And then we're going to guesstimate while we're here. If I'm going to go by that back mark. If they, don't, if they don't agree with each other, I think we should probably slice it right about there. What do you think? Draw a line, we'll cut that off. See how well it fits. We gotta flange that other piece. And then we'll go to cutting that back up. Come on now. It's 
throw you in the microwave. Aw, oh, you bastard. Somebody needs a date. Does it work for me? Come on. Be real bad, you put them in the microwave, the glue softens up again. Bar. What do you think? You got it? So I cut that off and I was getting ready to flange this lip in and give the outer panel some place to go. But I'm wondering if we should probably do it the other way. Because of the, we're not gonna be able to get into this area anyway. And if I do kick it in here, it's gonna push off the floor and give us like a little bit of a curve there. Not that I couldn't beat the floor back a little, but I think for ease of installation, Maybe we should take this lip. Yeah, so sucks is the bottom. Actually, we don't have to go all the way down now, do we? Let's kind of eyeball that because this is a separate panel anyway that we made. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. We'll still recess this all, all the way down. Let's see what we got first. <laughs> it's too short. <laughs> the whole length. Son of a... All right, let's go put a, a witness mark where it is. Now we know where this panel is going to line up. That would be pretty good. Yeah, I think if uh, we step this one to go behind here and then just where that floor is, maybe we'll just cut it right out and let it kind of wedge around it. Glad you agree. And yet more noise. Notch that hand drop. Right. right there. So we want to we're gonna go call it there to there. So we're gonna get rid of that. Hoping this is the last time we have to go squeeze it in there. Well make modifications. We're still gonna take it off. Shave it just a hair right there. to there. We need to shave some of that off right there. And it doesn't cut this corner. 
but we have that other rocker to put on there yet. Talk about down below there. We saw that other piece to eyeball up. Let's go just fine tune that last little bit so we can kind of clamp it in place. We'll either jump on the back or we'll jump on making this piece fit here. I got two clamps on the top. That's looking pretty good. I like it. There's nothing holding it this way. Ran a grinder over it. Just kind of see the height difference. This is slightly higher than this, which is fine. Because it gives you an area to fill. This is pretty level. Right here, it's a little higher. Level, higher. Again, it's not clamped neither. But just from static fit, seems pretty good. Plus the, the back lip of this still needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Probably has some cruddies on it. Oh, there's one down here too, holding it. I like it. It seems to match. Pretty good. I'm glad we hammered that top lip again. It would have looked like this. No, it doesn't seem that much, but you're trying to you're trying to mimic, you know, the factory seams. The factory seams here. You go from that all of a sudden to like a, a big casual roll to it. I think when we squeeze that one together, plug weld it, a little seam seal it down. I think that one we got around the money. Good. What do you want to do next? You can either fine tune that one or jump on the rear. I'm thinking the rear. I think the front would be more simple. I already said that. Probably have to take that tailgate off. Let's go get our piece and sit over here and ponder a little bit. Yeah, because we've got to tie in this stuff yet, too. Ooh, it's going to be fun. And this one's got a little junk in the trunk. Stay. Yeah, let's get that bracket off our tailgate and maybe we'll do we'll take a piece of tape, make a straight line here and we'll cut it nice and even. Everything else, it seems pretty good the rest of the way up. No sense in trying to recreate this one. What's on the truck is probably better than this lumpy, uh, see the lumps? Lumps. <laughs> of course, that's the part we need, right? Fortunately, it's kind of tucked under the bumper. Yeah, if you're masking tape, it's up a fight. About 30 seconds in a microwave. This re-softens the glue again. And it stays that way for a while. It's not like you put it in a microwave and it's like bread. It goes unstale for two minutes and back to stale. The glue kind of stays. I say we go from Let's go try a little lower first. We'll, we'll line it up with the, the piece we made. The problem is the car's got to curve to it. I'm going uphill, ain't I? I think so. And that would be yes, but good enough for now. Now we know we got metal. We got metal to here. And level over there. Let's see about body lines line up. So we can't do any less than that. And that. 
So I am going to want to cut. We're going to be generous at first. We're going to go up here to there. That's a lot. That's a lot of difference in height. Let's go with for now right there. Yeah, that should be fine. Don't do the wrong one. What I've done before too is I've taped it and then cut on the wrong side of the tape. <laughs> that one gets you too. Like that. Let's go slice that off. Right there. Give us a little bit of elbow room for the beans. So we can beat it in the submission. Let's see what closer we're going to be able to come with that. This edge needs to get hammered flat. Just get it right out of the way because it's not even close to where it needs to be. So let me go work on tapping that flat. See if we can get a clamp on it. I released the back this. Bring them up. That lip. I gotta do some hammering before we can get any further. This needs to turn into a 90. It's gotta go straight up. It's way on an angle. Let me go give that a couple of beatings. Let's try it again. A lot the other way. Jake, I'm not adjusted right. We need to curve this panel more too. It's too straight up and down. As you come around the corner. How's that gonna line up? Like shit. <laughs> I wish that gap would close up. Huh? I think it will. I think we gotta. If we trim down here, get rid of some of that. I just go right to that seam. How much of a taper in there is right there? That's gotta come out. And I think once we do the notch in here too, this can come this way a little bit. I think we can get it. I'm gonna trim a little bit of this off right here. The whole idea, see this notch right here? That was supposed to go behind this, that that recess right there. I don't think it's gonna be enough metal. Let's what do I wanna do? I'm thinking either we're going to trim the top down or the bottom up. 
for our line, right? So that's our line. Here, here. I got a sharpie? Of course I know. It's never in your hand. We you know. Right now we are right there. So, we're open up here to get up there. I wonder if we should just cut it maybe to here. What am I gonna do? Let's we'll leave this here for now. We'll just cut this. Down a half inch. Almost forgot. You're not even looking. <laughs> we'll cut this half inch down from here. I think which way to go. Do we want to leave that, this metal here? Or do I want to trim this down more? What if I was just to seam this right now? What would stop me from doing that, right? I just seam it right there and cut it. What's the What's the issue? Anything? No. Let's go do that. <laughs> that was easy, huh? And let's go mark where they are. All right, we know it's right there. I got that one. Put it where we want it. So we are going to want to cut up a half inch. And we want up a half inch on that one, right? You agree or no? One is are disagreeing. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. And after some beatings. Just has two clamps, or one clamp on the bottom holding it. Actually two. There's one between here and that one. So it has to come off. We gotta trim the body. There's a, there's a tab hanging down. So we gotta make it so that this panel lines up with this one. So between the two of them, I just gotta whittle it down. This panel, I gotta take off. I'll do that next. We gotta put it in the, the uh, shrinker stretcher. And give it more of a curve this way it's just too flat and the body's got a bit of a roll now this is fixed so we'll fix that and we'll come back and the other problem is it's just poorly made it's so deformed and i made this so this could be off too but we need to make some of this material and this material roll up and make more of a belly right there. And unfortunately, that one's gonna get a, get a, end up getting a bunch of dents in it, but we're gonna just do our best to line that up because there's another wall I wanna build for the other side of this channel. There's like a, there's a frame that holds the upper part of the truck, holds the tailgate, and kind of ties it all together. And I built one side of it, but I didn't build the other side yet. So we'll get that so it almost fits. And again, I still have to take it off anyway because I want to build that panel while that metal is out of the way. We're getting there. All right, let me curve that one. We'll see where we go from there. And let's stand it up. A little bit of a smile for you too. We'll be underzealous this time. light hits. Just enough to give her a little bit of 
this up. Yeah, it looks like it's got more of a curve to it now. Let's go check it. And I threw the other front piece back on. We have to do the fine tuning of making that match that profile. What I might do is I might just, first gotta cut it back, but I may just slice right up in them, back a little bit, taper it in to match that, and then just weld those seams back up again. And what it is, this is slightly wider than this. And that was my oopsie. And we gotta make a patch for right here. And then if I would have caught that earlier, this piece was longer, I actually cut it down. That could have stepped up into there. The rest of it looks good. I'm happy with how everything is lined up now. So this will butt right up to it. It will kick over just a little bit, but there's a clamp between these two. So if I release that, get a couple of tacks on that first, then come back and clamp this again. It'll even get tighter on this lip. And this could have been a sharper bend. That's all right. There's no clamps up here yet, neither. I uh, clamp that, that gap will close up a little. The curve looks good. That way. They match each other pretty good. Top one looks pretty good, except for right here. It's a little too much. I got to come back and just relax that a little bit. That seam looks decent. Happy with that. And there's not even any clamps on it, so. I'm gonna make a patch right here. And we gotta do that back corner section before we put it together. But that's it guys, it's like midnight. So I'm gonna call it. I was gonna try knocking that out, but we'll do that another day. I may probably get some stuff done and then just like show you, you know, maybe get this side getting welded up and we'll move on to something else. It just, it just takes a long time. It's hard to make a video and make it go by, you know, get a lot done without not showing anything in the video neither. I would say the bottom of that truck looks a lot better than what it did. And see how it's, if I didn't weld this, I really should have, this should have gotten done when this corner got done, but. Oh well. I make this piece. It actually just overhangs on here. It's got a lip. We got to bend down for the wheel, catch the wheel well. Probably a lip to bend down will catch the quarter panel. I think it just slips right underneath this thing from underneath, from what I saw underneath. I think this has a flange on. Unfortunately, I think that was kind of like spot welded together. So maybe we'll just clean the edge back. We'll try to grab a couple of tacks out here. Gentlemen and ladies, I think I'm going home. I'm going to eat. How many I already wrote about what are you going to do about the rust underneath? What are you going to do about corrosion? What are you going to do about paint? What are you going to do? I got it. <laughs> I've tried all that stuff. I've tried the acid, the phosphoric acid. I've tried pour 15. I've tried a lot of different things. And uh, for my climate, my area, and when these cars are this rusty, I mean, it's the whole thing's rusty. But you're gonna, you're gonna make sure you got one area really spotless, but the rest of the truck still looks like this. So I use bar and chain oil it's for chainsaws, very tacky. After I'm done, after I'm done painting, I'll still, you know, I'll blow paint. I'm not going to paint in between the seams and all that, but I'll paint what I can paint when it's together. And then afterwards I come with barn chain oil and a sprayer. I just soak the crap out of everything. It kind of pickles it pretty good. And that's what will happen to this. I have other vehicles. Crusty. I should probably show you. People. 
crusty, crusty people, for those who don't know this truck. This is one of the earlier repairs, restorations I did. This truck was really rough. <laughs> You're looking at it saying, yeah, it looks rough now. This was rotted to death. Literally, the only thing that was attached was the driver's door. Every other door, hatch, lid was rotted off gates. None of them were attached. They're all just rotted to death. So this was saved the same way and saved not to screw up the paint. I wanted to keep the outside the way it was. Actually, when I got it, you couldn't even see it. The lighting here sucks right now. But it was covered with red oxide primer. So I can show you somewhere on it. See right there? That's red oxide primer in there. Goof off and scotch spray. It was all over the whole truck. Underneath it was all the writing. Well, this truck was rotted. Where if you climbed in the back, you would have hit the, hit the ground through two layers. So, underneath this is all new. All that, except for the two rails in the middle. Everything here, the floor, all this is new. And it was pretty well barn. It was kind of like just like, you know, black painted for dust. And then barn chain oil. And then just a little bit of dirt from the road kind of gets on it. And it makes a protective barrier. And this is. You see, here's like mud just like stuck to it. But underneath it, it's still barn chain oil. I could actually go for another coat. I haven't. Oh, we did this the one time, and that's it. And that's again seven years ago, maybe more. So that's what I do. It's all still rusty up in there, but it's soaked in, and it doesn't get any worse. These are all new welds you can see. And there's actually bare metal up in the treasure chest. And we're up in the treasure chest. So that's the bottom of the floor. All that. And I haven't even really sprayed that section. And it's still pretty much bare steel seven years later. You can use a coat of oil. But as long as they stay dry, they do pretty good. The bottom of the floor was painted, it's all new. So this is what has worked for me. And I'm gonna to continue to do the same with that truck. It's made of 55 years. And what I patch, pretty much I feel is gonna last for another 55 years. And I won't even be here. <laughs> so with that, the lens must be dirty. I think we're gonna go sign off and uh, we'll pick it up on another day. Guys, I thank y'all for kind of hanging out with me. Doing some rust repair. Bring the old junk back to life. All right guys, till next one. See you later. Bye. I should go and say it because 10,000 people, I gotta write in the comments that no. So the outside of the body, Ooh, that lighting is horrible. Has toilet ring wax. Toilet ring wax is the stuff that you bolt the toilet down in your house and it makes the seal. Well, that is rubbed into this thing with, when the glass was out in all the pores. So the outer skin, again, it was just done that one time, has been protected by in the pores on the outside. Same thing, it's an oil based product that just blocks any moisture from getting through. And it just stays the way it is. This is a piece that, uh, the light. So this was a piece of bare steel. As the door was gone, I patched in. And I tried to rust it. I tried to make it get rusty to match the rest of it. It got, the problem is with, with new rust, it turns more orange when you try to quicken it up instead of like the dark, you know, that dark brown that's there and then that got sealed with the toilet ring wax and you actually still see it's almost like bare metal still and i was trying to make that rusty now i'm done I'm not sure if you can be able to see it i'm gonna try to catch it in the light and rock back and forth but right here there's a phone number i can see i can make out a 
a six, it looks like a dash right there. Two, six, that's either a five or a six. I'm gonna go with another six. And a four. Does that show up? If I can get the reflection of the light. Oh, just right. It pops up. I get closer, maybe. So it was a commercial truck at some point. I don't know when. And I would think there might be more writing on it. Just got body worked and sand, sanded off of it. Maybe that's why it got repainted at some point. See some lumpiness and stuff up here. Could have been a logo or a, a picture of something. But definitely a phone number. I don't see it on the other side. I only see it right there, though. Watch it not show up on a camera at all. You guys just think I'm nuts.